Welcome to the Hunting Standard Podcast, featuring your hosts, Brady Ovid and Garrett Wood. Now, join us and dial in your next hunting adventure. Thanks for joining us again for another week at the Hunting Standard Podcast. I'm here running solo today because Brady's off in the woods lost somewhere or at some teacher conference. We zoomed in here five to 97 times probably and kept getting cut off. So we're thinking that's a bust. It's probably not going to go. So I'm going to be here talking to you guys alone today. Might be a little scratchy because we're moving around a little bit. I figured I might as well stay busy while we're doing the show if we're not sitting in the studio hanging out. So, what do we got on the agenda for the week? Well, I just got back from Oregon. We spent a week out there. It was a good trip. The weather's been good. It poured down rain here the whole week, it sounded like. So, it was a nice week to get away, spend out on the coast, out on the ocean. And the weather was great there, which is kind of unusual for, seems like you get some rain at least one day when you go and spend a week out there. And it was sunny, beautiful weather the whole time we were there, so can't complain about that. Great week out there. We got to do some good stuff, had some fun. It's fun to get away. We're busy. We've been really busy, both Brady and I, I guess, running around doing different stuff, so that makes it hard to always get together to meet up for these, so we'll make it work and do what we got to do. I think we're going to tune back in on Wednesday next week and do an update then, another little episode, and then Friday as well, so we might throw in a couple extra episodes. But today I think we'll chat a little bit about our fishing trip that we went on out there on the coast. It was a super successful trip. We all limited out on fish and came home with bags of crab which was super nice had some great meals over the campfire and just couldn't ask for a better trip on that and it's it seems like I've been out on multiple different fishing trips like this charter trip this is a charter trip so we go out with a guide and I've been out on quite a few of them here in the northwest up in Alaska uh, different different trips and you it seems like usually you have fairly good success on these trips, but at the same time, you never quite know what's coming or quite what you're going to get. And it's hard to know, especially if you are going on vacation somewhere, you don't know the area, you don't know any local guides in the area or charters to go out with. And you can do research on it, but it seems like in our case, we typically are find ourselves wherever we went for a trip and then it doesn't happen until the day before, a couple days before we decide we want to go out and fish for a day with one of these guys. And so it's not really a planned thing. And it seems like there's a lot of people I know that are in that same situation where they'll go on a trip somewhere. They're not going to go fishing, family vacation, that kind of thing. But they find themselves by the water, seaside, thinking, oh, it'd be fun to go out for a day, take a fishing trip, see what we can do there. So it's hard to know who to go with and if you're going to be successful or not. And up until like a year ago, I hadn't ever really thought much about it because it seemed like every trip that I personally had been on, we'd had pretty good success. We'd done well. We'd come home with some fish every time, which is, it's hard to say that's expected fishing. But when you're paying for one of these charter trips and it's guys that are out every day and they know the ocean or know where you're at, you're kind of expecting them to know what's going on and to put you on some fish and to do good or at least come home with something. It's it's fun either way, especially like this when you have good weather and it's great to be out in the water on the boat and whatnot. But coming home empty-handed can kind of feel disappointing after you paid for a trip. So I think we'll chat a little bit about some ideas I'd had and... Things you can look at to make sure that you're successful going on these trips or that you get out of it what you want to. 
So up until like a year ago, like I said, everything we'd done had been fairly successful. Um, seemed like we always came home with something. We weren't always empty handed. And then I went out with a guy a year ago with my family for a salmon trip. And it was a small boat. We were staying kind of in the bay. We didn't want to be out in the big ocean because I have a lot of family members that get sick, including myself at times. And so we stuck to the bay, or that was the plan at least. We got a, got there early in the morning, get out with this guy. And I don't, <laughs> I don't think we made it more than a quarter mile from the dock the whole trip. We were out four or five hours, trolled around, never had a single bite. And throughout the day, this guy is calling all the other guys that he knows apparently are friends or acquaintances or whatnot that are on the water, asking them for tips, asking them if they know where the fish are at. Just, just I mean, trying to get us onto something, I guess, but... Uh, you, you, we kind of just got the impression that he didn't quite know what he was doing, you know? And it showed. We went home without anything. We got back to the dock, had nothing. Not a single fish, not a single bite all day long. And like I said before, you know, it is fishing. That can happen. You can be unsuccessful, obviously. But certainly if you can avoid that, and if there's ways to avoid it, you want to by all means. And we we went out that trip and just came home kind of disappointed afterwards, to be 100% honest. It was just, we were hoping to catch some fish, as you are if you go on these trips, and it didn't happen. So that kind of got me thinking the next couple of trips I went on, things that you can look at or stuff that you can pay attention to ahead of time to be successful on trips like this. And so the next the next trip I went on after that actually was out in Seattle. Um, we chartered a boat for tuna is what the albacore tuna is what we were originally going for with one of my good buddies from college. And turns out the weather turned bad the day or so before and we couldn't get out as far as they needed to. I think we were supposed to go like 40 miles out for the tuna and they didn't want to go out that far because the weather was just too crummy. So we ended up staying in closer. We we still went out probably 20 miles, 25 miles into the ocean, and it was still rough. It was one of the more rough days that I've been out in the ocean for sure. And I think every one of us by the end of the day was puking. And for me personally, I was puking most of the day. Like In that sense, it was a miserable trip. But at the same time on that trip... We had fish after fish on the line all day long. This is a six and a half, seven hour trip, and there probably wasn't five minutes all day that somebody on the boat didn't have a fish on the line. And so even when you're sick and just down and just feeling crummy, that still keeps your spirits up, and you're still happy to be there. You're excited about it. You're looking forward to going home and having fish, fresh fish to eat. And so that trip was a salmon trip we caught. We all limited out on silvers, I think. And then there was a couple kings that were caught. And the second half of the day, we went after rockfish. And the same thing with those, one after another. Um, guys running the boat, you could tell, just knew what they were doing. They put us on the fish from the first moment that we stopped in the morning until we were done fishing for the day in the afternoon. And so in that sense, it was a great trip, even though everybody was sick, super successful. And we came home feeling great about what we had paid for. We were happy with the trip that we got. So there's kind of some things that I looked at that started looking at for these guys that you can, that take a few minutes, take you a super short amount of time you can do while you're on vacation, while you're down by the water. Get on your cell phone and give you just some quick tips or directions of who might be the best in town or who you should try and book a trip with if you can. So first of all, I started looking at social media accounts, which is this huge nowadays, and it's most all businesses are on there. You know, you can 
pull up somebody's Facebook page for these fishing charters. And the guys that are catching stuff, in my experience that I'm seeing, are putting stuff on there daily or every couple days. If they're being successful, if they're taking home limits of fish every trip that they go out, they're sharing it and showing it off, which they should be. And on the flip side of that, this guy that we went with a year ago here now that we were unsuccessful with was the complete opposite. No social media page at all. He gave us a little short brochure when we left. And within the brochure, it had pictures of himself and fish that he had caught on it. No clients, no big limits of fish, just several single pictures with fish. And it seems like this year looking, i seen several other places, you know, that's the first thing I look at. Like, do a quick Google search for the charters in your area that you're looking at. Find their names. Okay, here's three or four of them within town. Get on Facebook. Do a quick search for them. Look at their page. What do they have on there? Do they even have a page? If they do have a page, what do they have on there? And I seen, looking at it this year, there's pictures of guys that have a couple pictures every few months throughout the summer or across the season with pictures of themselves, pictures of maybe a buddy or two, maybe a client here and there, but it's super slim, spread out between weeks or months between their posts on there. And then you look at the bigger guys in town, or the more successful guys, I should say. They might be small, but they might be more successful. And they're putting stuff on there daily, or every couple days. You're seeing the limits of fish. And so that gives you a pretty good idea right off the start that, hey, these guys are catching stuff, and this is probably a good charter to call and try and go with. After you kind of nail down a couple like that, and this is what this is what we did this year. This is what I did last year with the Seattle trip as well, trying to choose a charter there. And then this is what we did this year here in Oregon. Just a quick search, look over their pages online, see what they're catching. And then after that, you can give them a call and talk to them a little bit about it. Ask them how the fishing's been, how the ocean's been, you know, about whatever trip that you're thinking about going on how they've been doing and what their what their clients have been catching there. And that's really gives you a real good overview, it seems like, for just spending a few extra minutes to do it. It's a super easy thing to do, super easy check you can do. And it just takes a few minutes to get on there and do that. After looking at them online like that and then calling and talking to them a little bit, like I say, you have a pretty good idea. But if you really want to kind of double check how things are going, call a day or two ahead and they always let you know. They tell you where you need to meet, what time you need to be there for your chartered trip. And you know how long of a trip it is. So if you're booking a six, seven hour trip, they run them every few days. If you call ahead of time and book the trip a few days ahead, you know there's going to be other trips in between you. So go down to the dock. Go down when they're coming in. If it's a six-hour trip, figure out when they'll be back from it. Go sit at the dock and wait and watch watch people come off. See how, see how everybody's doing, what the mood is like, how much fish they're unloading from the boat. And that's going to give you a great idea of how your fishing trip's going to go. If they're coming in with limits of fish, chances are that a day or two later they're going to be able to do the same thing for you as long as the weather stays good and you can get out and all of that. But I think it's a I think it's a real simple, easy thing to do that can kind of prevent you from being unsuccessful on these chartered trips, which is a bummer that no one wants to deal with that I don't want to deal with again. Because it's a pain in the butt when you're paying somebody for the trip and then you get back without even getting a bite all day. Kind of, a, kind of a rough time. 
so it's worth it's worth spending five ten minutes do a little bit of research like this and figure out how they're doing and if it looks like something that you're going to be happy to go on and if so then go ahead and go on the trip if you've already got it booked you know and it starts looking like oh they're not bringing anything in most of these guys have like a 12 hour cancellation policy and call them back if you did it a few days before call them back cancel the trip find somebody else whatever you need to do there but i think it's 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 real helpful just to check them out like that ahead of time spend a few minutes look over what they have going show up at the dock see what's coming off their boat and that's going to give you a pretty good idea of what you're going to end up with after your trip. This is this is something I've done a few times now and it's something I'll definitely continue to do because it seems like it's works out well. In this trip we we uh knew ahead of time, you know, like I'm saying we checked them out where they're catching stuff every couple of days. And so it looked good. It looked positive for us. And you kind of can tell right away. So we went ahead with it. We knew who we were going with. We decided to book the trip. Showed up the morning of. And it's just, you can you can tell. The captain's in a good mood. Deckhand's in a good mood. They kind of give you a real quick rundown of how they've been doing. Even though we had a little bit of an idea already, it was great to hear. They kind of told us, how far out we'd be going and where how the fishing's been there and what we needed to do to be successful through the day. So we did we were looking at a link cod trip this time and we ended up going with just a light tackle trip out. We still went out three or four miles I think. And this is a bigger boat than I've typically been on before. It was probably close to a forty foot boat. And there was 14, 14 or 15 people, I think, fishing on the boat. And so that's another factor, too, is there's a lot of people on the boat. It's, are you going to be able to get in and have your shot at every, you know, because a lot of these boats, they only have room for four or five poles running at a time. And this turned out to be a real good setup, and they definitely had things figured out well, so it worked good for us. They had rail running all the way around the boat, and then there was poles set every probably three to four feet and everything was rigged up and we were looking for the rock fish primarily on this trip although we did catch a couple link cod which was real cool and then it was a crabbing trip as well so headed out we went out mile and a half probably halfway out mile and a half two miles out and dropped the crab pots first thing in the morning it was an early trip. We left at like 5 in the morning. So that's that's nice to, you know, just getting up and going out, um, watching the sunrise on the ocean. That makes for a great trip. Beautiful day, so that was great. And the ocean was, the ocean was relatively calm compared to what it can be. It was super calm compared to the trip that I took in Seattle last fall. It was just night and day difference from that. So just a beautiful day to be out. So we set the crab pots out first and then went out another mile or so. And the captain on this trip relied heavily on the fish finder more than more than I've I mean I'm sure they all do it a little bit, but more than I've ever seen before. It was just on top of it. So we ran till he found the school of fish and our poles were all set up ready to go or ready for the most part. Um they went through and gave us quick directions of what we were going to do. Fishing for these rockfish, or I think these are like a black bass, is primarily what we caught on this trip. And so the way we were fishing for them is super simple. You would never guess anything would even bite this, but these fish must be starving down there is all I can say. So we had a three or four ounce weight. Probably, I mean, they're I don't know what they are. They're heavy weights, big weight on the bottom of your line and it's got a hook on it as well you run up three or four feet probably and there's a small jig there hook couple feathered or haired jig 
Um, the way it worked is we just all get to our poles on the deck there. The captain had pull around until we got on top of a school of fish and he was watching it like clockwork. As soon as we would get above the school of fish, he was giving commands over the radio so he'd tell everybody to get ready. As soon as we hit the school, he'd say drop. Everybody drops their lines. And what we were doing is just running them all the way to the bottom. So you let it go down until your sinker hits the bottom flip the bale, reel up one reel, give a couple jigs, reel up another turn or two, give another jig or two until you came up 15, 20 turns and then drop back down to the bottom. And it was fast and furious like that the whole trip. It was, he would give us another command once we were off the fish, everybody reel in, he would move the boat again We'd take off, get back on the school of fish, drop it back down, do it again. And it was the first the first drop we did, I pulled up a link. I mean, first jig I did, fish is on the line, and pulled a link caught up then. I think my sister pulled one up then. It might have been a double. Like I said, we had a hook on the sinker and then a hook above as well. And I know she caught like four or five doubles throughout the day came up with two fish at once so that was always pretty cool as well and we all got a couple of those it seemed like and it was just just an exciting day like the deckhand was spending most of his time in our corner on the boat it seemed like um there was a few other people on the boat that were just kind of inexperienced haven't ever fished before and so they're they're kind of learning as they go you know but it helps when you have an idea of what you're doing already and kind of have a plan for <laughs> what you need to do or <laughs> catch these fish when they give you directions and tell you what's going on and you know what they're talking about and you can go out and execute on it super helpful it seems like because he was spending a lot of time in our corner anyway but made for a great time great trip we pulled up i don't know how many fish but it's just one after another all day long and this was a shorter trip. We were only out for, I think, four and a half, five hours on this trip. So it wasn't like we were out all day long. But we just, and I think, actually, we got cut a little bit short. I don't think we went the full time even. We we went until the, everyone had their limit. So the way they were running it is they were keeping every fish that came up. And they just took a running total of the boat. So we had... I think I think there was 14 people on the boat fishing and we could do I think the limit was 5 a piece. So we were at like like 70 fish for the limit for the boat. And so the way it worked is they just ran it until we hit that limit. And I know there were several of us on the boat that caught way more than our fair share of the five i think i think my sister probably caught half of that total limit she one after another all day so and the rest of us did pretty good as well as so it's that keeps it exciting when you're you're not sitting around waiting you're not hoping something bites it's like your your bait hits the bottom and and you're pulling up and there's fish coming with it every other roll so yeah, like and it, just a great trip. I looking forward to more trips like this and can't wait to do more. Um That's a qu- few quick little tips for you guys anyway. This is kind of a short one. I think I'll wrap things up here, but go ahead and check this out next time that you go on one of these trips. Um look into it online like this. Just do a little research, few minutes of research and figure out who's catching fish before you book your trip and I think it'll make your trips so much more successful and so much more enjoyable thanks for tuning in guys and we'll catch you later hope everybody has a good week thanks for being here take care